Hello and welcome to episode 21 of Cold Case Christmas. In yesterday's episode, we looked at the case of Timothy McCall, a Royal Navy sailor who may never have made it back to his ship. Today's episode, though, is about a ship where a worker on there disappeared and an ominous message sent to his family that something bad happened on that boat. This is the disappearance of Kevin Dundon. Kevin was one of five children from an Irish family, but they were living at the time of Kevin's disappearance in Clacton on Sea. He had three brothers, Jimmy, Tom and Danny, and a sister, Jennifer. He was close to his three brothers and they grew up together, they did everything together. They were as thick as thieves, as we say here in Northern England. Kevin was staying with his brother Tom in Ipswich the night before he went to work on the Viking Viscount Ferry. He was working in the galley, in the kitchens, washing up, washing plates. It was during his shift, one particular night, that he completely disappeared. Tom, Kevin's brother, was 23 at the time. He never expected not to see his little brother, just a year younger, Kevin was 22, again, when he dropped him off at Felixstowe Port, ahead of that fateful trip. It doesn't seem real, he said. We were all in shock, in disbelief. So what happened to Kevin Dundon? So this is the timeline of events on that fateful day of Kevin's disappearance, according to Suffolk Police, who are the force that have investigated this case over the last 43 years. As I said, Kevin was working in the galley on a ferry that left Felixstowe to Zeebrugge in Belgium on Sunday 21st of September 1980. He'd only started working on the Viking Viscount Ferry three days before he went missing. He was employed to wash crockery in the ship's galley. The Viking Viscount set sail from Felixstowe to Zeebrugge at approximately 9am on Sunday morning, the 21st of September. There was uh, 86 crew members on board and 605 passengers, many of whom were in large organized groups of coach parties. So big ferry, lots of souls on board. So therefore potentially lots of witnesses to something untoward that might happen. It was recorded at the time that the crossing took about five hours with the ship docking in Zeebrugge for two hours before beginning the return journey to Felixstowe, and that was due at about 4pm the same day. In the periods when Kevin was not working or during his breaks, he was reported to have spent time in the staff mess room, which was frequented by various members of the crew throughout the day, you know, as they came and went during their shifts. They went to the mess room during break times. And also, passengers sometimes were invited in there as guests. So we don't exactly know how many people had been in and out of the staff mess room during that day. However, the last confirmed sightings of Kevin were around 6.30pm, so this was during the return journey, when he was believed to have been seen exiting the galley through a door which could have taken him either to the toilet, so he was just going to spend a penny, possibly, or to the deck. The position of the ferry at this time, so about 6.30pm, was approximately 26 miles off the Suffolk coast, an estimated one mile south of the Galloper light vessel, which was one of the number of static lighthouse ships anchored around the UK. At around 6.50pm, it was noticed that Kevin had not returned to the, what they called the plate room. So, an announcement was made over the public address system for him to return. 
When he still hadn't returned by 7.30, a number of further announcements were made for him to return because he was new on the ship. He'd only started working for this firm three days previous. So I would imagine that the first thoughts of the bosses were ones of annoyance, like, you know, he's taking time off when he shouldn't be. Anyway, the ferry docked at Felix Store at about 8.45pm and all the passengers disembarked. Around 9pm, the ship's master instigated a complete search of the ferry, and he wasn't there. They searched everywhere. He was not on that ferry. So, it took until 10.45, you know, because this was a thorough search, for emergency services to be called. And they were informed that Kevin was missing. The Coast Guard then commenced a man overboard search at around the place where Kevin possibly could have gone overboard. So when was he last seen? When is there a proof of life on board? The Viking Viscount left Felixstowe for Zeebrugge at 11pm and along with three other ships searched the waters in the vicinity of the Galloper light vessel until approximately 1.30 a.m. the following morning. Kevin's body has never been found. A missing person investigation was therefore launched by Suffolk Constabulary, and more than 30 witness statements were taken from people at the time. Now, remember, there were 605 passengers and 86 crew members, so 85, not including Kevin but only 30 witness statements were taken from people who had been on board that ferry at the time who may have come in contact with Kevin. So a lot of souls on board, but only a fraction of them could have come in contact over that day with Kevin. The vast majority of these inquiries involve crew members, but remember, they were sometimes inviting passengers into the staff mess room as guests. But over the years, no definitive answers or evidence as to what happened to Kevin was ever found. And his status has remained as missing for over four decades. Speaking in 2020, so at the 40 year mark of him being missing, Andy Guy, the major crime review and unsolved case manager for Norfolk and Suffolk Constabularies said, 40 years have now passed since Kevin Dundon disappeared and his family have been devoid of any explanation as to what happened to him since. The original investigation faced some considerable hurdles due to the fact that Kevin was on a ferry 26 miles out at sea when he was last seen alive and that ferry was carrying almost 700 people. The matter was further complicated due to the fact a majority of the passengers on board appeared to have travelled using a 60-day identity card rather than a passport. Because the ID of the holder was not logged with the shipping company, now it would be these days, but remember this was back in 1980, not every passenger was identified and traced. Again, he was speaking in uh, 2020, and he said, Over the last two years, we've identified and taken statements from individuals who were not seen at the time, but were on board the Viking Viscount with Kevin. There seems to be growing support to suggest Kevin's disappearance was not accidental. Although Kevin had only been with that ship for three days, if anyone does have answers as to what happened to him, it will come from his colleagues amongst the ship crew or people he came into contact with in the mess room. It's highly unlikely that Kevin was still on the ship when it docked at Felix Store because they did this you know, comprehensive search of the entire ferry. So did someone push him overboard? Was there an argument or something and he was pushed overboard? Andy Guy went on to say, I believe there are individuals who were on that ferry that know what happened to Kevin, but have not previously told us. Kevin's parents died without knowing what happened to their son. And uh, also Jennifer, his sister, has also since died. But there are three brothers who deserve to be given some answers and closure about the fate of their sibling. 
Kevin's brothers, Jimmy, Tom and Danny, asked the police to give a statement on their behalf, but they've also spoken to the media, so we'll uh, talk about that shortly. But what they said to the police was, it's now 40 years since our brother Kevin disappeared. He was just 22 years old. Unfortunately, during that time, our mother, father and sister Jennifer have all since passed away without ever knowing what happened to him. Seeing our family being torn apart with grief was virtually unbearable. We remember that day vividly because the rest of the family were visiting Norfolk. It was a clear, dry day with good visibility into the evening. We were told the conditions were the same aboard the ferry. Under these circumstances, it's extremely unlikely Kevin could have gone overboard without being seen, or gone overboard at all, without being pushed or jumped. And there's no evidence whatsoever to suggest that Kevin was suicidal. You know, he's got a new job. He's not going to just go and jump overboard, is he? So if he went overboard, someone had to push him. So the brother's statement went on to say, we implore anyone aboard the Viking Viscount that evening, so the 21st of September 1980, who may remember anything, however small, about the incident, please contact the police. And just finally give the brothers closure. Now, they did speak to a number of media during 2020, when it was the 40-year mark. There's a little bit more that um, I found on the BBC that is very interesting. The BBC picked up on the fact that the Suffolk Police are now reviewing the case, saying that there's growing support to believe that Kevin's disappearance was not accidental or something caused by him that his leaving of that ferry 26 miles away from Suffolk Coast was uh, no accident and not voluntary on his part. Now, this is the thing that I think is really alarming. Tom, so Kevin's brother, said he received a phone call in the early hours of the Monday, so that would be the day after Kevin's disappearance, from a priest at Felixstowe who told him that immediately after the ship docked, a crew member went to talk to him about what happened on the boat. The padre said to me, he couldn't tell me what he said, so what the person said to him, but don't let it drop. Bad things had happened on the boat. So I don't know whether the priest has kept that secret all of these years, I don't know whether that priest is still alive even, or whether that priest went to the police. But if that priest kept that secret, I don't know what to say about that. I really don't. In 2020, when they made this appeal in the media, Jimmy, Tom and Danny were aged 65, 63 and 60, respectively. And Kevin would have been 62. So an entire adult life Kevin has missed. It's so sad, the parents fell to pieces after Kevin's disappearance and they died without knowing what happened. So, anyone who believes they have information, however small it might seem to you, it could be huge to this investigation about Kevin's disappearance, is asked to contact the Joint Norfolk and Suffolk Major Crimes Review and Unsolved Case Team on 01953 423 819 or email unsolved reviews all one word, at norfolk.pnn.police.uk. Alternatively, you can contact the independent charity Crime Stoppers, which is completely anonymous, on 0800 555 111. I sincerely hope that a resolution of Kevin's case occurs before his brothers leave this earth. It will be a shame for an entire family to go to the graves without knowing what happened to uh, Kevin. So if you do have any information, please get in touch with the police or anonymously at Crime Stoppers. Let me know what you think about this case in the comments and I'll see you in the next episode of Cold Case Christmas. Bye guys.